Since building the open source response time tool, I've tested a whole load of displays, and man, some of them do some really weird stuff. So I thought, why not make a video talking about all of the weird stuff that I've seen in my testing. A lot of this is also stuff that I can't say I fully understand, so if you do, I would love to learn more from you uh, down in the comments. But without further ado, let's talk OLEDs. OLEDs are a weird one to test for response times. Being an organic light emitting display, the LEDs or light emitting diodes themselves can change brightness levels and therefore color outputs in nanoseconds if driven hard enough. Realistically, it's more like microseconds, but that's still a lot lot faster than a traditional LCD display that can take milliseconds, literally an order of magnitude longer. In fact, here is an LCD measurement and an OLED measurement overlaid. See the difference? Yeah, OLEDs are fast. But let's take a look at that OLED data a little more closely. See those dips every six milliseconds or so? That is at the start of every new frame. And yeah, it dips to black. Every frame, it quickly dips to black, then instantly back on to display the new frame. I've captured that with high-speed cameras before too, and it's something that every OLED I've tested does. And if I'm honest, I'm pretty confused. See, most liquid crystal displays just change what voltage they are set to over time, so they sort of meander from one state to another. But OLEDs are instant, so the controller just says nope and switches off, then comes back to life with the new voltage to be set to. This is one of those things that I would love a more detailed explanation of, so if you have any further explanations, please do leave them in the comments down below. I would love to, to learn more about that. One of the other quirks of OLEDs is that thanks to their insistence on holding a given voltage until refreshed, sometimes the controller decides it just fancies missing the targets and over or under shooting. But, well, unlike a traditional LCD panel, which will just slowly work its way back to the sort of correct voltage, well, on an OLED, it just holds that position for a full frame before correcting itself back down. This is another one of those really weird quirks that, thanks to so many people having OSRTT units, I've seen countless tests of various WRGB and QD OLEDs that still exhibit the exact same behavior. Again, if you have any more information, please do leave a comment below. Moving on from OLEDs, but not that far, we have Mini LED. Specifically, standard LCD monitors that use a mini LED backlight. The two main reasons for that, uh, sort of choice as it were, are maximum available brightness, mini LEDs can get crazy bright, and the fact that you can switch some of those mini LEDs off to give you local dimming. Basically, because liquid crystal panels don't block all of the lights that the backlight is trying to shine through them, what should look like black often looks more like a dark grey, leading to a less than ideal viewing experience. But if you can turn the backlight off, well, then it's pure black. It's as good as an OLED, give or take anyway. And so the, the quirk here is that every mini, mini LED panel that I've tested, be it on a thousand pound gaming monitor or a four thousand pound gaming laptop, they all flicker like crazy. Here's an example of that, again with some high speed footage, so you can see roughly what I'm talking about. And that is thanks to a thing called PWM, or pulse width modulation. See, there are two main ways of controlling the brightness of an LED. You can either just lower what voltage you run it at, or you can basically switch it on and off really fast so that the average light output of it being on and then off for some amount of period, some you know space in between, uh, that averages out to whatever brightness level you need. 
PW and backlights generally suck. They can cause eye strain, headaches, and generally just aren't all that great for you. But the key thing is the frequency. AOC's AG274QXM cycles at just 500 hertz, meaning it switches the backlight on and off 500 times per second. The ASUS Zephyrus Geo 16 cycles at 50,000 times per second, which is much, much better. If I'm being honest, I'm not entirely sure why all mini LED monitors with local dimming support need to use PWM for the backlight control. I assume that it has to do something with uh, both obviously the local dimming itself, but more probably the cost. I I'm sure that it's possible to do local dimming with mini LEDs using DC control instead, but also the more I think about it, the more I think that's probably a very expensive way to do it instead, so maybe not. Now jumping back to more traditional monitors, did you know that a whole load of them actually overshoot past RGB255, aka full white? You'd think that, that you're know, setting the screen to be as bright as it can would be the limit, right? But no. My best guess for this is that the backlight is set in steps, say, of 10. So when you set the brightness to 45, it actually sets the, the backlight to sort of halfway 50, and then it just shifts how open the pixels are to fine grain that adjustment in brightness. But that means when you set the overdrive too high and it swings past where it's meant to be, what it thinks full brightness is, you end up actually outputting more light than you would otherwise expect from full white. That does also help compress the amount of space that the crystals have to move to for any given transition, which should help speed up the response time too, but it does also mean that you get a bit of a even more light than you were expecting for a short period of time. One panel tech that just takes its sweet, sweet time though is VA or vertical alignment panels. Especially in the darker shades, these can take multiple times longer to transition than with the brighter shades. This distinct lack of speed is what often creates a slow, smeared look to a, you know, VA panel monitors because they're just really really slow, and it shows. Finally, I wanted to give you a little teaser or something that's coming really soon that I'm incredibly excited about. I talked a little about this in the last OSRTT video, but this little guy is OSRTT Pro. It is a huge step forward in functionality, especially because it can now test at pretty much any brightness level you'd want. Anything from 60 nits to like 1500 should work just fine, and it should be even more accurate too. I'm actually really excited to get this out, so keep an eye on the channel for a full video on this soon. You can also head over to osrtt.com and leave your email address in the newsletter section uh, to be notified when this is available and uh, when it's sort of actually properly launching. Uh, like I said, I'll have a full video explaining all about it very soon, so keep an eye in. Yeah, that's kind of a look at some of the weird things that thanks to the response time tool I've been able to see and capture with monitors. If you have any of your own suggestions, things to add, of course, like I said, if you have any insight into any of the things that I've mentioned, please do leave them in the comments down below. I would love to hear them. And uh, yeah, that's kind of it really. If you want to check out some of my monitor reviews, then I'll leave those on the end cards. Of course, if you want to check out the OSRTT, I suppose now units, uh, you can check out the playlist that should also be on the end cards or check out OSRTT.com as well. Well, uh, otherwise that's kind of it. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to support me rambling on, there are plenty of links in the description or YouTube memberships or Patreon, all this sort of stuff. And yeah, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it and we'll see you on the next video.